Hey guys, welcome back to Maple Syrup Tech. So today we're going to be looking at our first budget build for 2019. So we're going to be getting back to a little bit of computing after going into retro gaming for a couple of videos. Uh, but today we're going to really be trying to answer more of a question than actually present a build. And that is whether the uh, Intel G3258 which is a very was a very popular CPU back in 2014 for some special reasons, which we're going to go over really quickly. It's that basically, if any of you weren't building computers back then, uh, maybe you don't know about the G3258, but basically it was a budget processor released by Intel, a two-core, two-thread processor. However, the special thing about this processor and what Intel normally never does is this processor was actually unlocked, although it was a budget part. And not only was it unlocked, but it was actually uh, overclockable on any chipset back in uh, the 1150 socket CPU days. So basically what that means is you could actually get a motherboard and CPU combo pretty much for around 100 bucks when it first came out. And you had a CPU that was fully overclockable. Very rare for Intel. Uh, nowadays, we don't see that anymore. For overclockable parts, you've got to pay a huge premium with Intel. So back in the day, for budget enthusiasts, the G3258 was like the king of budget gaming. Now, the question I was wondering is that, can a two-core, two-thread CPU keep up with modern, modern gaming? Um, and basically, that's what we're going to try and answer in this video. Now, the parts presentation is going to be a little different than usual. The reason why, and unfortunately spoilers, the G3258 actually underperformed in my opinion. So rather than present you the bill part by part so that you can reproduce it, we're going to go over the parts list really quick, but uh, we're not going to do a part by part breakdown like we normally do because this is actually a build that I wouldn't recommend you reproduce uh, because overall, if we look at the uh, budget we applied for this system, which wasn't huge, about $300 at, at like max, um, you can actually do a lot better nowadays. And you'll see that in the testing we did, unfortunately, the two cores, two threads really shows its age nowadays. And we can see that we've really gone into an age where, uh, f you know, four threads is really necessary for gaming. So you, you either need a CPU with two cores, two, uh, four threads, or a four core CPU or higher to really keep up with modern gaming and have no stuttering and, and you know, a really pleasurable gaming experience. So without further ado, uh, let's just do a quick breakdown of the parts list. So parts for this system. Basically, uh, I picked up a CPU motherboard combo for $75. Uh, it's a basic MSI motherboard with the G3258. Uh, if you break it down, you should be paying the G3258 around $30 to $35 and the motherboard somewhere around 40. Okay, if you go with a basic motherboard. And please, if you're investing in this CPU, although, like I said, we'll look at later, maybe not the best idea in 2019, uh, do not overpay on a motherboard. You don't need anything special for it. Um, mine even has only two DRAM slots and it, you know, I could still overclock the CPU perfectly fine. Everything else is, is a-okay. Uh, after that, I paired it with a basic uh, power supply, which is a EVGA BR450. For the graphics card, I took an RX 460 um, two gigabyte. Honestly, even this graphics card was overpowering the G3258. Uh, I paid about $75 for the graphics card. That's what you can pay, pick it up nowadays, regular on eBay. Don't pay any more for it. If you have the four gigabyte model and try to pick up a four gigabyte model, but as you will see in the tests, the graphics card wasn't holding this system back at all. So uh, the two gigabytes in this case did not make any difference. For DRAM, prices are finally back to normal. So I picked up a eight gigabyte G-Skill uh, 1600 megahertz uh, kit for only $25. Uh, the cooler I used was the uh, eBay $20 cooler that I reviewed a while back if you wanna check my channel. Uh, decent cooling options it gave us what we needed for this CPU. Uh, for storage, I only used a simple SSD, which is a 120 gigabyte. I didn't really pair an H HDD in this build because since it was only for testing, it wasn't really necessary. But obviously, if you're looking at a gaming build nowadays, you want to throw in a one terabyte hard drive for about, you know, 35, 40 bucks. 
And we put this in the Rosewill FBMX1, which is a $20 case from Amazon, because this isn't a system that's gonna be creating a lot of heat. Uh, it didn't need any type of special case to really you know, stay, stay in the normal temperatures. So overall, I mean, all the other parts on this build could be reusable in another one, but like I said, the motherboard CPU combo, as we'll see uh, in a few seconds, there's probably some better options out there. If you have a couple of really specific use case scenarios and we're gonna go over them, it's not a bad build, but it's just that probably for the same money you have better. Because on 40, the G3258, even though $30, $35 isn't a lot for a CPU, for a two core, two thread CPU in 2019, it actually is in my opinion quite a bit, especially since you can pick up a brand new AMD uh, two core four thread CPU for 50 bucks and pair it with a B350, B450 motherboard and overclock it as you wish. So um, anyway, we're gonna get to the results uh, really quickly, but that breaks down the build. If you want the exact prices and links, I'll put them in the description down below. But like I said, we're not gonna do a piece by piece showcase as usual because Contrary to all my other builds that we've done so far, this isn't one that I would personally reproduce if I were you guys out there, but I think it's an important learning experience performance-wise, and this was such a popular CPU back in the day, I think a lot of people out there are gonna be interested to see how it performs nowadays in more modern games uh, without having to buy it and test it yourself. So, without further ado, let's get on to the results. So. Sorry uh, for the change of uh, haircut and clothing, but something came up and this video had to be recorded in two parts. But as I said, let's get to the results. So first of all, overclocking the G3258 was pretty easy. I got to 4.5 gigahertz without any problems. And I could have actually probably pushed it a little further, but it's where I felt comfortable since we really have a budget motherboard and this case doesn't have the best airflow. If you haven't seen my review on it, you can go check that out. Now, uh, for the first results, let's start with uh, Cinebench. So this is just to get a baseline to see that the CPU did overclock and that there is a performance boost from that overclocking. So as you can see on the screen right now, before the overclocking, the Cinebench was giving around 243. After overclocking, we were hitting be between 325 and 327. So it's quite a bit of a percentage boost in uh, performance overall. So the overclocking of the CPU does give you much better performance on its two cores and two threads. Let's move on to a synthetic benchmark, however, and see how that translates a little bit into gaming. So if we start with Firestrike, the overall score was 47.95, which is actually respectable for a budget system. Where the problems arise is that when we break it down, if you look at the graphics score, that was a 60.32 compared to a physics score of 45.21. So here you see that the CPU is really lagging behind the graphics card. And if we were talking about a high-end graphics card, something like a GTX 1080 or 1070 or whatnot, it's not a problem to have a CPU lagging behind because they'll always lag behind those cards. But in this case, since we're looking at a RX 460, which is a budget entry-level uh, graphics card, it's you see it's going to be it's becoming going to become an issue that this CPU couldn't even keep up with this grade of graphics card. And if you see the combined score really takes a hit at 1960. And just to illustrate this point, Time Spy, which is a higher resolution um, test basically, uh, it'll be on the screen now, gave an overall score of 1712. And here you see that the CPU manages to catch up by upping the resolution scaling. So the graphics score was at 1706 compared to a CPU score of 1753. I thought it important to show this test because it really shows you that with scaling, the CPU manages to, to catch up. But since this is a budget system that we're gonna be aiming at 1080, 1080p gaming, uh, the Firestrike score really is gonna show the issue that's gonna arise. So no spoilers, I said it before. Unfortunately, I didn't consider that this build was a very high success because we're, if we get to the real gaming benchmarks, um, we, I stopped honestly after the first and second game because the same problems were arising. And let's talk about Fortnite, which is probably the most popular multiplayer game. And a lot of you out there are building your systems to make sure it runs that game. The average uh, frame rate was actually not too bad, hitting 82 average. Normally, for a budget system, I'd say that's okay. 
The problem was, as soon as we got into uh, intense situations with a lot of building, a lot of other players, you would get really harsh stuttering frame rates that would drop as low as 5 frames per second during the action. And that's when you want your high frame rates, unfortunately. So the CPU basically has trouble keeping up, calculating the different physics, when there's a lot of building, fighting and whatnot going on. And basically what that causes is micro stuttering while you're playing, which in a game like Fortnite is the difference between unfortunately getting killed by your opponents and being able to react. So unfortunately, in my opinion, for Fortnite, this system was actually near unplayable just because, yes, it loads, yes, you get into the game, you can play the map, but as soon as you get to, into a really intense situation with a lot of building and a lot going on, the CPU stutters and can't keep up. And I know it's the CPU because I've tested this exact graphics card. If you look at my past builds with four core, four or, or at least four threaded CPUs, and this stuttering wasn't happening. And I pumped it in back into my test bench with a Ryzen uh, 3 1200, and this graphics card was running Fortnite no problem on the test bench. So it really isn't coming from the graphics card. It's unfortunately coming from the combination of this CPU with that game. Um, and honestly, this is the only game we're going to look at the actual results because the other games, basically, it's the same story over and over again. Even though if I got through my three benchmark runs, uh, the average frame rate was not representing what the actual you know, performance was because if you got into really complicated situations, the CPU would just unfortunately not keep up. But it's not all bad because, you know, I like to point out that if you do have the CPU, it's not garbage you can still play games like league of legends older games uh like you know rocket league which are games that were made while two core cpus were still i would say the norm for budget systems and you'll be hitting over 200 fps no problem and most of you out there if you're really budget gaming aren't gonna have a screen that will go up to 240 hertz anyway so you'll be maxing out the settings you'll be able to play no problem if you want to emulate this system is actually perfect for it as well. You'll hit up all the way to PS2 games, 60 FPS, no problem, because these are systems that, and games that were designed for two core systems, which were, you know, what those systems were all the way up to even PS3 was still two cores. But unfortunately, emulation on PS3 right now is sort of iffy because it's still a semi-current system. So I don't test it yet because it's really hit or miss. And sometimes it's not the system's problems, it's the actual um, emulators and ROMs faults. But all the way up to PS2, 60 FPS, no problem. 30 FPS for the systems that were running at 30 and whatnot. So overall, as I said, I get, I. I hope you guys appreciated nonetheless looking at the build, although it wasn't what I would determine as a successful budget build. I mean, I think we learn as much from our mistakes and builds that don't work as the builds that do. So, you know, overall, unfortunately, the G3258, it's not a bad CPU. And honestly, personally, back in the day, I loved it. It was a hell of a f lot of fun uh, overclocking such a budget part, and especially from Intel, which is an uncommon occurrence. But, you know, nowadays you can see that the market and current gaming has really shifted toward, towards it having at least four threads. Because even on the Athlon, uh, which is two cores and four threads, the, the, the modern Athlon for the Ryzen platform, it's not a problem that's arising like on this CPU. So I hope you guys liked the video as usual. Please like and subscribe. It does still help the channel a lot. Uh, we're going to be growing, we're going to be coming back with some more videos and, you know, check out my retro gaming videos, let me know what you guys think about them. Uh, I, I really have a passion for that kind of stuff and I hope you guys will get into it too. If not, well, I'll see you guys for more computing videos because we're still going to keep up with those as usual. Sorry for the longer than usual delay for this video, like I said, I had a few technical issues and a few timing issues. But, uh, thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.